If I walk on Fort Monroe on the base, I envision the contraband, I envision the troops, I envision the prisoners, I see it. And it, it touches a place in me that brings hurt because it had to be like that. What we are enjoying today in terms of art, music, worship, cuisine, cultural experiences, technology, engineering, science, all those things which we now enjoy and experience and share with the black community all started with those people who landed in 1619 here, and it survived. By the time we get to those beautiful words, we the people in order to form a more perfect union, that whole concept, the whole little catalyst starts when they are arriving here on the shores. It's incredible that at the exact site in our country where the first people were traded this property is the exact site in our country where the first people were not returned as property. I think there's a tremendous sense of pride that I, as well as so many other Hamptonians have. This city was founded in 1610, and just nine years later after its founding, we have the arrival of these first Africans. We want people to return to this sacred, hallowed ground in 2019 and to feel as if they're walking on the same ground that those Africans walked on, who really became the mothers and fathers, along with the founding fathers, of what would become America. This is a significant history for our country and everybody needs to know about it. Every day I drive over a bridge that takes me into Fort Monroe. And I'm constantly reminded that it's the site where the first Africans in English North America arrived. And in a lot of ways it gives me goosebumps because I, I think about my ancestors. Maybe one of them were part of that experience. How did it feel to be a member in that ship, having traveled the oceans and being cooped up and, and not being in your homeland? What were they thinking? Could I have withstood some of the challenges that they had? These are people who were experts, were skilled, were family members, were persons who were involved in advanced nation states, who were kidnapped, who were taken. I don't think I'm, I would have been tough enough. They had to be some real tough people to endure the things that they went through to make our nation uh, what it is today. And then later on during the uh, Civil War, which began to set in place or set in motion uh, the events that would lead to emancipation. Three men who were enslaved in Hampton had escaped. General Butler did not return them. The Confederates came the next day and demanded to have their men return. General Butler declared them contraband of war because you're using them against me. And they asked for asylum and they're given it. And next thing you know, thousands and thousands of people are showing up asking for freedom. And that space would eventually be called Freedom's Fortress. And 150 years from that moment, the very first black president, with all the power given to a president, made it his very first national monument. So this is the arc of history, which we have at Fort Monroe, that needs to be brought forward. I'm hoping that 2019 will be a watershed moment for America, very much like the 1960s Civil Rights Movement was a watershed moment. 400 years of the African American experience. That's a powerful thing to contemplate. The legacy that they left um, uh, reaches deep, it reaches deep. And uh, so when I'm at Fort Monroe, it's a special place. If we're going to talk about promoting healing and togetherness, we're going to have to talk about some things straight out heart to heart. I always, as a kid, you know, I want to raise my hand up and ask the pastor the question, why isn't that white and blacks are not worshiping together? And we're supposed to be connected. These are questions that the regular person, we probably walk around with asking ourselves, right? How do I navigate in your space? Am I invited to your events? Most people are afraid to ask those questions. 
But the 400th anniversary is for everyone. White, black, and green, tall, whatever. This is an American story. Period. It's an American story. We want this to be a rich, year-long celebration of the triumphant African spirit, but with the dignity of paying homage to those who came and left their imprint. We have delegations coming from Africa, you know, kings and ambassadors and people that are coming that need to be healed because they think that Africans in America are not connected to them. So we had to do healings on every level. Our job is to talk to our friends and neighbors and remind them they have a civic responsibility to participate. Because we all have a piece of the rock, and that rock being there at Fort Monroe. I see this as our generational opportunity. I see it as our generational responsibility to recognize this moment in time and commemorate it. To be in this city on the 400th anniversary Oh, I'm waiting for a tremendous time. You can really see the legacy of the African landing woven into the entire culture of Hampton. I think Hampton has always been a multicultural city, and I think this gives us an opportunity to really emphasize that. This is as impactful a, a site in American history as Jamestown, as Yorktown, as Williamsburg. So I really think that this puts us on a new platform, a new landscape for national visitation. I'm a product of public schools, my husband also, and our girls. Yet they aren't learning about a history that is so connected to them as young black girls. For a long time, I believe that the first Africans arrived at Jamestown, which was preached in school uh, throughout my time and not until I came back and start really being involved with the 2019 Commission did I understand that that wasn't entirely true. I really believe that this will become a site that is visited, you know, or should be visited by every American. In 2016, we had the 100th anniversary of Langley Air Force Base. Uh, in 2017, we had the 100 year anniversary of NASA Langley Research Center. In 2018, we've celebrated the 150th anniversary of Hampton University, as well as a local community college's 50th anniversary, Thomas Nelson Community College. And so we've been really looking forward to 2019. It will probably be the culmination of that three years of celebrations, and that really just kind of makes me swell with pride. People in our community uh, take great pride in a story that's recently been told in the form of the hidden figures, and those were the African-American women who were the human computers at NASA and helped place the first astronauts on the moon. As we have evolved from you know, the arrival of those first Africans who came in the bondage and uh, all the way up through uh, electing our first uh, African-American president. We think that uh, we have played a significant role in the uh, history of this country and uh, helping to shape the culture in so many ways. To have so many contributions, even in science and medicine, and almost pick the field. And, and I just think it's been tremendous. It, it's helped America become what it is. And I think we are the envy of the world. We have painful places in our history, and they may be things that we're not proud of, but they shaped us into the country that we have today. And although we're imperfect and we still have work to do, it's still the best country in the world. We're either gonna move forward or we're gonna fall back together. We have to find a way to capture the spirit of the people that landed here 400 years ago, because that's the spirit that has survived all the things which have occurred, that's what Fort Monroe can give us. These kind of discussions. Think about that for a second. We're not shouting, we're not fighting. We're having a dialogue that allows us to think a little bit. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. That's actually growth. It's not only individuals, it's organizations that are really coming together throughout Hampton to make sure we are telling this story, not only on a local stage or a regional stage, but we really want this to have a national impact. I'm hoping that people will join the bandwagon and get on board. I, I do hope that. 
I really feel that we can make some great strides in bonding us together as a nation because we are now a little bit biased, the greatest nation in the world. When people talk of the Grand Canyon or the Statue of Liberty, my goal is for them to mention Fort Monroe. It is truly a treasure. Yes, we are talking about the African American experience, but I mean, Edgar Allan Poe was there. Robert E. Lee, Jefferson Davis, Abraham Lincoln, Harriet Tubman, all walked in those spaces. It's a complicated, beautiful, ugly, magnificent place. And guess what? That's America.